Hello YouTube, my name is Alan Samsel and uh, this is my channel, Alan's Cloud. Uh, today's topic, we're going to talk about Proxmox and um, resizing hard drives. So, I don't know how many people have run into this, but um, in the Proxmox hypervisor, when you're dealing with the storage drives of the virtual machines that you've created, you can increase their size, but question is can you decrease the size and uh, I believe I found a way to do that maybe this is known to other people uh, or it could maybe help somebody else so um, stick around all right so uh, in the Proxmox hypervisor when you're setting up virtual machines you can set the size and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Proxmox uh, virtual environment interface here um, what I've got highlighted right now, this is my primary um, Dell R710 that I have set up for Proxmox. Right now it's down. It was in maintenance mode. Uh, well, I was in maintenance mode. I was uh, replacing the uh, Perk 6i uh, RAID card with an H700. And uh, so I'm finally done with that. So uh, before I wipe this thing out to reset th some things up, and those are going to be some other videos that you'll see uh, popping up here soon. Um, I wanted to kind of go through this one uh, because I hadn't found another way to reduce the size of a hard drive only to increase it in Proxmox and so that's kind of annoying. Uh, so what I've got highlighted for you here, I've got a Windows uh, 10 test box uh, set up right here. Um, it's running, I'll, I'll bring up the window here in a minute, but, but right now I'm on the hardware tab and uh, just showing you that it's got eight gigs of ram uh it's got one socket and eight cores um you know the the pertinent information is is i i when you first set it up you set it up with the cd drive in there um so that's good we're gonna we're gonna need that here in a minute uh but you as you can see this is the hard disk and and here at the very end of the line it shows you the size size equals 500 g so that's a 500 gig drive um, but it's a bit too large you know what if, what if I want to reduce that um, is there a way to go and and change that so uh, up here at the top you, you've got a couple of different options for the virtual machine itself you can add another drive you can add you know several different things in there um, you know PCI devices and whatnot uh, but you know I've got this hard disk here uh, highlighted and you can detach it and if you detach it um, you know basically it's it's still there it's still associated with the virtual machine you haven't deleted any of the data but the machine when you boot it up it it, it won't see it um, so in some ways that can be useful um, you can edit some of the information about the hard disk itself and the most important one here is this resize disk you know one would think you'd just be able to click that and here you you know resize the disk and um, you know, if I've got 500, let me put a, a negative 200 in this uh, size increment section here and resize the disk. Well, that's not how it works. Uh, so size increment is um, meaning going up. So whatever you put into this box here um, is an addition to the 500 that you've already made it. So, you know, say you wanted to reduce it and you come and you put a 100 in here and you hit resize disk, then you're going to wind up with a 600 gigabyte drive. So don't do that. Lesson learned. Um, so, I, you know, I was struggling with this. How do you go about, you know, making that hard drive smaller? Well, when I got to thinking about it, you know, Proxmox is a virtual environment. Um, you have to approach it like you I would with a, um, you know, an actual physical machine. So if this was a, a real computer and I had you know one boot drive um, that had a partition on it and I wanted to copy that partition over to uh, a different you know hard drive I, I've used in the past I've, I've taken uh, you know boot partitions from larger hard drives and I've you know ghosted them essentially onto um, uh, you know created a smaller partition first and then ghosted that onto um, you know solid state drives to, to get faster boot up times and things like that well it all has to fit first and so so you know I've, I've, I've gone through that process physically I thought well you know maybe that'll work for virtual machines and uh, it turns out it does um, so one of the things that you can do here is uh, the first thing you're going to want to do and the reason why I'm running the the virtual machine right now let's bring that up is um, you want to go in here and and uh, 
you know, clean up anything you've got in there. You got extra files, anything that you don't actually need, um, you know, skinny it down. So we're going to empty the recycle bin, um, you know, get rid of, of any of the files that you had in there that you don't need. Um, and then we're going to actually go to, and I'm sorry, I can't see it past the camera. We're going to come here to the disk management. So here in disk management, you can see that the capacity for the virtual drive that's in this, um, you know, virtual machine. Uh, right now, you've got your C drive. Uh, it's it's all NTFS, and and you've got a, a system reserved, which is was what Windows creates when you when you install it this way. Um, so between those two, that's your 500 gigabyte drive. Well, down here, your 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 disk zero, 500 gig online. The reserved piece is there. This is your actual boot drive. If you right click on it and you click on shrink volume. Um, it's going to take a minute. It's actually going to look at uh, all of the available hard drive space and it's going to pop up um, with this this box here that tells you what it was to begin with and the size of available shrink space in megabytes. Uh, so whatever it comes up with, it might be, you know, um, a bit bigger than you were thinking. Um, but, you know, for some reason, this is the algorithm that, that it chooses and, and says, you know, maybe there's some swap space in there. I, I don't know exactly why Windows does it this way. Um, I was thinking that you could, you could, you know, save a lot more space than that. But uh, whatever that setting is, just hit shrink and, and, and let it um, go about basically resizing the partition for you. So... You see that that happened. It's uh, 254.78 uh, gigabytes right now, and uh, the unallocated space is the 244.68 uh, gigabytes here on the side. Um, so this is perfect. So right now we can shut down the machine, and um, and I'll show you how to uh, essentially copy, you know, ghost these partitions over to a new smaller virtual machine hard drive uh, and it will boot up um, and and basically what you're leaving out is this other 244 gig here so when we create our new virtual machine for the the, the uh, when we create our new virtual disk for the virtual machine that we're going to copy to we need to make sure that it's big enough to contain all of this so we're going to make it um, say 270 gigabytes um, something goes a little weird when you're when you're working with these things in the raw mode and and they it looks a little bit bigger um, during the process than it I think really is but um, it does work uh, so now that that shrunk we can actually turn off the virtual machine here and power it down Okay, so now that the virtual machine is powered down, uh, what we're going to want to do is, is stay here in the hardware tab, um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add another hard disk, and uh, like I said, we're going to make it the same kind that we did before. So when I made these virtual machines before, it's not the standard right now, uh, which should be the Vertio uh, SCSI, but I did make this with Vertio Block, and when I did some testing before on this, I couldn't get um, a virtual machine transition from one virtual hard drive to another the way that we're going to do this, and uh, change it from one format to another. Couldn't get that to work, but you can go with whatever you had it before, and I had Vertio Block, to another Vertio Block. Um, so we're going to put it uh, on a different storage um, uh, something about the the io here of, of these devices um, you're, you you can you know shift it around once you're done back to the whatever hard drive you want to run it from but um, you know if you've got two hard drives in there that you can copy from one to the other that's going to be the quickest way you're going to be able to do this uh, so the backup uh, is the, the hard drive that I want to use uh, to create the other hard drive. And again, we're going to make it, uh, what did we say, 265 uh, gigabytes before. So going from 500 uh, to 265. And uh, with these, I used right back uh, for the cache. And uh, that should do it. So it's going to go ahead and create that vertio one 265 gigabyte disk right there. So um, let me show you what I've got. 
Uh, well, here I'll show you in the browser. Uh, G4L. Um, so this is Ghost for Linux. Resize that. Uh, it's a, a hard disk partitioning tool. Um, I used Parted Magic for years. It's a <clears throat> great little boot disk. Uh, you can find the ISOs out there. Uh, you know, Parted Magic has the G-Parted system in it um, for resizing things. And you know, one of the tools that it had in there was was a, uh, a you know cloner. Um, well, the one that it had in there didn't really work very well, but they had a, a, a different, well, they actually had a, a different suite of tools in there. And one of them was uh, Ghost for Linux, G4L. And uh, so I've used that one several times. And it turns out, uh, instead of having to boot up um, a complete ISO, a, you know, complete Linux operating system and run these tools, which you can, um, that's still an option, they have ISOs here um, on SourceForge at the G4L project page. And I found the latest one here uh, uh, under the files. And this is kind of what it looks like here uh, with these images. And, and I'll go through it here in a minute. But here under the files, if you go to ISO images and you scroll down kind of halfway, this is the latest one. This is the one that I'm using, the G4L uh, version 0 0.55 ISO. Um, it's uh, from 2018, so it's not that old, and it's only about um, you know 80 megabytes, so very tiny. So uploading that into your uh, Proxmox PVE or to wherever it is you are storing content, I happen to have mine in here, and so I uploaded it real quick, and there it is. So what we're going to do back here in my test box um, uh, again I've got my uh, original drive that has the boot disk on it and uh, we also have the vert IO one that we just created 265 gig which we're going to transfer the information over to so we're going to take this CD drive here we're going to double click it and we're going to pick our local storage and we're going to pick that G4L ISO and we're going to use that as our boot uh, device and so to do that we're going to check options first and make sure that here in boot order the CD-ROM is the first um, so when we're done with this an important piece is this vert IO zero disk was the original one so when you um, uh, are done with it and we detach it and that's going to be one of the final steps you're going to want to come in here and double click on this so that you can set that uh, to vert io1 and that's going to be the new um, you know hard disk that you're going to want to boot to so uh, just just another pro tip there uh, so back here under hardware we've got our uh, boot media set up it's going to go to the cd drive first so let's go ahead and bring up the console over here and we're going to boot this up I'm going to make sure we have local scaling on. Okay. So, and the first option here, you're going to want to hit enter. And this is the one that it's going to boot. So, yeah, even though this is, um, you know, 80 megabytes, it's uh, quite, uh, quite easy. He's got a, a lot of load screens in here that we'll kind of work our way through. So, okay. Uh, this is just telling you that you have a couple of options here. You can use the GUI or you can use the command line. We're going to exit all of these. Um, it's going to check for an active uh, link because one of the options you can do here is you can actually ghost, uh, you know, or image a hard drive through your ethernet over to a, a file server if you wanted to to create a backup on on another um, you know form of storage this one here is just about the key mapping for your keyboard um, so in this option here we're going to do option one which means we're going to type in g4l and we're going to use the menus to do this okay so yep there's your warning um, and so here's the important part. This uh, Ghost for Linux, it works in raw mode. It does every single bit. Um, so that's that's important. You can, you know, use file mode. Um, I, I, I've, I've never done it. I've always done raw and it's worked perfectly fine. 
So, and instead of network or local use, uh, we are going to do click and clone. We're going to directly clone a drive. So, so here's here's you know the main guts of what we're about to do. We're only going to use option A, B, and C. Um, so, for option A, we hit enter, and we're going to pick the source drive. So, the source drive is obviously our virtual disk A, which is the 500 gig drive. You hit the space bar and you get the little asterisk and then you hit OK. That gives you the information just to make sure that you're choosing the right one. Uh, gives you the metadata about the drive itself. So we're going to hit exit there. We come down to uh, option B here which is uh, the select where you're going to clone it to. So your target. And for that one we're going to go to virtual disk B and hit our space and select that. And we're going to hit OK. Now there's no extra information about that drive because it's completely blank. And then we go down here to click and clone, which is option C, clone the drive now. Say, so, uh, are you sure? You know, this is what you're going to do. Move uh, every bit from uh, drive A to drive B. We're going to hit yes. So, um, you know, depending on how big the hard drives are, how much information you're switching over, uh, the type of hard drive, uh, whether or not it's a SATA drive versus a SAS drive versus an SSD, um, is going to determine how long this is going to take. Um, you know, the, the speed of the, the RAID cards or host bus adap adapters that you have, the, the speed of the hard drives themselves, whether or not they're, you know, three gigabits, the cache sizes, all of that can factor in into how long this process is going to take. And also this warning here at the top, um, you know, if you're not using a 500 gig drive to a 500 gig drive, which we're not, the information here isn't going to be accurate. So um, the one thing that I like about this program is just because you're mismatched in the size of the disk that is your uh, source and your target doesn't mean that this uh, program is going to stop. It's going to keep going and until um, it can't any longer. Uh, which was the difference between the other cloning programs that that I tried on Parted Magic? It just it wouldn't work. Um, it uh, you know noticed the size difference in drives and it didn't care that the partitions would actually fit. Uh, so with this one here, we'll see how long it takes. Um, you know, and we'll I'll uh, get back to you guys uh, when it's done doing its thing and uh, we'll go from there okay so here we are at the end um, as you can see the clock has stopped so this thing counts itself and we're at 36 minutes and 34 seconds but uh, it's actually been going on you know for a little bit longer uh, but but as you can see the progress bar has stopped at 52.95 percent um, and uh, what is it? 271,128 uh, megabytes uh, has been transferred of the 512, and and that's it. So because the hard drive uh, that you are transferring from is bigger to the smaller one, this you know when it's done, this is what's going to happen. It's it's just going to freeze. Um, so. With it being complete like that, there's there's nothing else for you to do uh, at this point. Uh, it, it's all been transferred over. So uh, one of the things that you can do here in Proxmox is just go ahead and uh, stop the machine. There is no uh, shutdown function. There's no there's no need to uh, do anything but actually just stop the virtual machine. Okay. So we will. Go back here, and with that stopped, so um, again we have, let's see here, this is our new disk, the 265 gigabytes, and the 500 gigabyte drive was the original. So we're going to go ahead and select the Vert.io 0, the original 500 gigabyte drive, and we're going to detach it. We're not going to delete it, we're just going to detach it. Yes. Okay, so it comes down here to the bottom, unused disk zero. That's perfectly fine. So the other thing we're going to do here, we're going to go to our options. Uh, and as I said before, vert IO zero isn't actually there. So disk vert IO uh, one is the new one. 
uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and remove the CD from the, the virtual CD drive. Um, we're going to leave it so that it's you know still the first one to boot. But we come here to hardware, uh, and we're going to remove the Ghost for Linux from the virtual drive. There we go. Okay, so we have the original disk unused. We have the new one here as hard disk uh, one. Uh, that is the uh, 265 gigabyte hard drive and uh, we're going to go ahead and fire this sucker up and bring that one back up well here actually we had this one as well we're just going to go console and bring it over and that's my cat <laughs> uh, make sure that the local scaling is on and we're going to start this up. See what happens. Hmm. There it is. It was actually firing up. what we'll do is we will let that boot in let me take a minute okay so the virtual machine uh, when we first fired it up there it went to a black screen um, it uh, got a eventually a uh, blue screen of death the new Windows 10 version of it immediately rebooted itself uh, and then, um, you know, somehow it ended up fixing whatever it thought the problem was. Um, and, you know, Windows did a little bit of the churn, the little, you know, magic donut there. Um, and then eventually we get to the login screen here. So uh, it looks like it worked. And uh, we're going to log in here and take a look at the device manager and make sure that our hard drive is the way that we set it up. Okay, so uh, here you can see, remember, we um, shrunk the drive down to the uh, 254.78 gigabytes. So that's the, the shrunk down hard drive partition. Um, this unallocated space here is because it, uh, I, I knew that in the process here we needed a little bit more room uh, for the other uh, transition program just to make sure that we, we, we didn't... Um, you know short change our, our new partition here so uh, you can actually go ahead and you know take up that 9.68 gigabytes there uh, you know um, unshrink the hard drive to consume that extra space uh, create another little small disk or just leave it if, if it, even if it's unused not not a problem um, but overall we've managed to reduce the size of a you know virtual machine hard disk from 500 gigabytes in Proxmox down to you know as you can see here 265 so we've saved ourselves some space and um, you know this is this is this is a handy process whether it's with a uh, virtual machine like this or with uh, an actual physical machine I've, I've done this many times um, so let's take a look here we'll shut this back down While well, that's shutting itself down uh, back here under the hardware again. Uh, now um, that that disk drive, the original 500 gigs, um, is, is, is right here. And it's on this storage space here, hard drive 3 for me. Um, so we can go ahead and at this point click on it and remove. And when we hit yes to this, it, it warns you it's going to permanently erase all of it. Um, there you go it's going ahead and it's deleting it um, now with this this video here you know on, on this particular uh, test box that I had set up this was from quite a while back I had set this one up with the uh, EFI uh, so the bios for this one um, 
you know, I don't think I'm actually using that EFI disk. I think it, uh, so, so it didn't actually affect this. Um, but I, I, I think with this machine, I, I had tried both different types of, of BIOS. So uh, if you happen to have uh, one that is using the uh, OVMF, uh, so UEFI basically, <clears throat> and is using that disk, this may work a little bit differently, but I, I kind of doubt it. Um, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're pretty much setting up, uh, you know, in here, uh, in the options, what disk you're going to be booting to. So vertio one is that new drive. Um, so, uh, you know, here, lesson learned, this is pretty useful. Um, if any of you have ever, you know, wanted to shrink down uh, an operating uh, system, um, I assume it's a very similar process on Linux. I'm, I'm not exactly sure of what commands you would run to, you know, sort of uh, shrink the partitions on the Linux uh, box, but um, I assume you'd run the, the exact uh, same kinds of things. You go in there and clean up some of the disks, and then you could run, you know, something like gparted, change the partition sizes uh, for the Linux machines, and do exactly what we did here create another disk. You know, ghost the information over and um, make sure it boots up okay, and then you can delete the original disk. Um, so that's the theory. I haven't done it for the for the uh, Linux machines, but if I can get this to work for a Windows 10 machine, I I can't imagine it wouldn't work for Linux as well. Uh, so I hope this was useful. Um, if you've got any questions, um, you know, leave a comment down in the comment section uh, if you if you liked it, if it helped, something you might find useful. Um, you know, again, give me a comment and uh, give a like and you know, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to uh, build my subscriber base here. Uh, so uh, have a good one.